Hey, Jawbird. Hey, buddy. It's raining pretty hard out there. It's been raining all night. I don't know what we're going to do. What's up with this thing? What's up with that thing? What's up with that tail? Tell him. I brought you some really awesome chicken home last night, and you got to eat chicken all night long, didn't you? You got to eat chicken all night long. You're spoiled. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Hey, what's up, guys? So it's raining outside, so I'm just going to kill some time inside and to see if it'll like blow over a little bit and have some coffee and whatnot. But somebody the other day had actually uh, posted the question asking if I ever got to see Shelley's um, Oscar from the Diary of Anne Frank if she ever showed it to me. And that actually provoked a whole memory and a whole story I wanted to tell you guys. Um, so when, uh, when I met Shelley, um, I was as adventurous then as I am now. And uh, just one night I was looking around online and uh, I saw that they were having an art exhibit in Amsterdam. It was a limited like two month exhibit at the Van Gogh Museum in the basement. And it was actually going to be a comparison of the works of Rembrandt and Caravaggio. And it was based off their like their biblical paintings. They would do Samson and Delilah, and they would do various um, scenes from the Bible, and they were just going to kind of like A, B, and show how, with like a hundred years difference in where, when they both lived, and that they were from different cities it was just showing how differently they interpreted that scene from the Bible. And I really wanted to see that. So I went online. I found a $500 plane ticket round trip to Amsterdam. And I bought it. And I decided to go. And, uh, and I knew Shelley at that time. I told her I was going to go. And she was like, you're going to have a great time. There's so many great museums. Make sure you go to the Rembrandt house, which was already high on my list because I was heavy into the 30s movies even then, and I had been watching the Rembrandt movie starring Charles Lawton. So I was really excited to see anything that was Rembrandt connected. He just could capture this, like, darkness and sadness. And what, if you don't know anything about Rembrandt, what Rembrandt would do is he would, um, he would be commissioned by kind of the royalty and the noblemen and the uh, politicians in his area for, um, for portraits and a lot of times he would either be fired or it would take him a long time because he would um, he would hire like a pauper or a homeless person off the street dress them up in nobleman's clothing and then he would paint that and just trying to capture like that's how he would capture some of that deepness and the sadness in the eyes um, and they did not really like that too much then um, so in a lot of ways Rembrandt would spend a lot of his time either with money for a few years, or completely destitute without anything. And um, so anyway, I wanted to go see this, and Shelley said, look, my Oscar's at the Anne Frank house. You gotta go to the Anne Frank house and take a picture of it for me. And she said, um, do you know how my Oscar ended up there? And I had read her book, so I did know, but she wanted to tell me anyway, and so I let her. And so what she said was that she told... Um, she told, made an announcement to her housekeeper who was with her for like 20 or 30 years or whatever that if um, she won the Oscar for this movie that she would donate the Oscar to the Anne Frank Museum, and, which in Amsterdam is called the Anne Frank Huis, H-U-I-S, Anne Frank House. Um, and so she had had the Oscar for like 10 years and had never donated it and then was going on a trip and her housekeeper said, Miss Winters? It's time that you donate that Oscar like you said you were going to. You're going to take it and you're going to donate it. And uh, so Shelly's like, okay. So Shelly goes to the Anne Frank house. And the day that she walks in to t tell him who she was and to donate her Oscar, they say, we actually, would you like, can you come in this room? And they take her in this room and they say, one day a year, Otto Frank, Anne Frank's father who survived that house, comes and visits the museum and he's actually going to be here today would you like to meet him and so she got an hour to sit in an office with Otto Frank and uh and just ask him questions and we live it and Shelley was Jewish she was uh her ancestors were from Israel and so Shelley was very very devout Jew and uh so for her it was like a very moving experience um she had people that family members that died in the Holocaust but, um, so when I went to the house, 
The very first thing they tell you when you show up at the Anne Frank house is that you cannot take pictures inside. You can take pictures outside, but you cannot take pictures inside. And so when I got there, and I went in, um, in the very first room, even before you start taking the tour, they have Shelley's Oscar on display. And I went and found a curator, and I just said, look, I am a personal friend of hers. Uh, I know you might not think it because of my age, but we're very good friends. And I told her I was coming, and her one request was for me to take a picture for Oscar. Would that be possible? And they go, we don't allow any pictures here, but let me talk to somebody. They go talk to somebody, come back, and they go, we'll make an exception for Miss Winters and for, for you. And so I ended up getting to take a picture with Shelley's Oscar um, and of Shelley's Oscar. So I'm going to look through my old photos and see if I can find my Amsterdam pictures. And I'll, uh, I'll include some of them in here so you can see her Oscar. You can see the Anne Frank house and maybe a little bit of my trip. Um, but I just thought, since somebody asked about it, I thought I would tell you that story. I always thought that was such an interesting thing that they were cool enough to let me. Um, even then, people were willing to break the rules for stuff like that, like historical purposes. And when I came back and got the photos developed and everything and showed her, she was so happy. She was so ecstatic that I got to see her Oscar. All right, so the bad news is that uh, at one point I had a hard drive problem and I took it to a guy to get worked on and the hard drive got destroyed, his business got flooded. And uh, so I was able to find a blurry picture of Shelly's Oscar. They have it behind a glass case so I got some reflection, but I couldn't find the picture that they took of me with it. Um, I don't know, maybe that was on that hard drive, but... Uh, Right here is the picture, one of the pictures that I took that I'm surprised I even saved because it was so blurry, but you can kind of see it and here it is. What's up friends? I'm finally outside. I, uh, <laughs> the, since the last time you saw me, I have slept the whole day. It's now like 4.30 and I've been sleeping all day because, well, working 20 hours in two days, I guess, really wiped me out and, uh, and so it was raining, and uh, I was supposed to have plans with somebody today, or we were supposed to meet up, and uh, she wants to wait till Wednesday, so I said, oh, if I don't have to be anywhere, I'm not going to be anywhere. So I've just been sleeping, and uh, I'm taking John for his walk, and then I'm going to go a couple blocks away and show you a little extra something for the vlog today. I actually was just going to leave it at the, uh, telling you my story from Amsterdam, and there's actually more to that story I'll tell you guys later, um, later today. But John and I are going to go take a little walk, then I'm going to take you for a short little adventure. Check out what this guy's up to. Good stuff. See what you do when you got free time and got the artistic will. This guy's got it. Take care, brother. As Ja and I were walking down here, we got to a street corner and there were about 10 homeless 20 year olds huffing spray paint cans in a tent. And when I walked by, the guy said, do you mind if I spray paint your dog? And I said, do you want to keep your teeth? And he realized I was serious and he apologized. Right here on the corner of Hollywood and Vine is the historic Taft building. And uh, to look around Hollywood, you might be surprised, but uh, the Taft Building, and see, you can see all the buildings around it, right here at the Taft Building was the very first high-rise in Hollywood. It was uh, opened in 1923. Before it was here, it was the uh, first Methodist church. They bulldozed that to build the Taft Building. And before the Methodist church, it was seven acres of orange groves far as the eye can see. Now, some of the interesting things about the Taft Building is that, uh, other than it just being the very first high-rise in Hollywood, since it was less than a block away from the Brown Derby, one of the most famous restaurants in Hollywood, it also became a hot spot for agents and managers to have their offices in those buildings, 
Charlie Chaplin once had an office in this building. Will Rogers had an office in this building. And uh, one of the things that they love to brag about is that Clark Gable's dentist had an office in this building. I guess the first three floors were made for kind of dentist's office, doctor's offices, and then everything else from there up was either residential or um, made primarily for business offices. Now they said the entire construction of this building is, other than the windows obviously, the actual base construction of this is all brick and concrete and they, they actually said that if you lined up every brick that they used, it would reach from Los Angeles to Santa Barbara, which is like 105 miles away. And that's something. Now this was also the first home of the American Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences very first home of that. Now the only thing that I actually know of for sure that is uh, in this building now is that uh, a couple of years ago on Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew, he brought some of his uh, patients down here for a day out and uh, they have an office in this building. Not the patients, Dr. Drew and his uh, so associates. So let me show you the front of the building and the entrance. Which is right here. And this, is, of course, has got historical status now. And of the, uh, the original high-rises in Hollywood, the only three that actually remain from the original construction are the Taft building right here and then right across the street this used to be the uh, Broadway department store and I've shown you guys this partially before when I did my uh, armed and dangerous vlog Frank Dooley drives his cop car by here and this little alleyway in between the two buildings is where they film that scene of him catching the guys robbing the store but in a few days I'm actually gonna be doing the building right next door, which is the Hollywood Star Plaza, but I don't want to ruin it for you now. So here it is, the beautiful construction of the Taft Building. John, what's up fella? You knew your fans want to see you. All right, guys, I found an old picture from the 60s, taken right here. I'm gonna insert it so you guys can see it. Right here. And here's another uh, picture of the Taft building from another angle. If you can believe it, when, uh, when Mr. Taft bought the property and had the church demolished. He got the property for 125000 I can't even imagine what this property at the corner of Hollywood and Vine would be worth now or how much it would cost now. But uh, right next to it was the funeral parlor where Bella Lugosi was buried. And if you're looking to huff paint, right there on that corner is a bunch of derelicts huffing spray paint. Alright, so here's the rest of the Amsterdam story. Is that uh, when I decided to go to Amsterdam, I bought my ticket like six months in advance. And about two weeks after I bought the ticket, my friend Adam from Ohio, who's in the band Times New Viking, calls me and says, hey dude, we're doing our first tour and uh, we're gonna be in your town on March 25th. And that was the day that I was flying back in. So I was super excited. And uh, then he, he says, hey, do you mind if we stay in your apartment? And I was like, I'm not gonna be there, but I could probably leave my keys with my upstairs neighbor and he could let you in. So that was the arrangement. So, my upstairs neighbor was actually the guy who picked me up at the airport, and uh, when he picks me up, he's like, acting real weird, and he goes, so how was your trip? And I was like, it was awesome, dude. Did my friends make it in safely? And he goes, yeah, they, they made it. Um, we gotta talk. <laughs> and I go, uh, uh, what? And he goes, they blew up your printer. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, we had a little bit of a problem. So the story goes is that I had a printer, but I had very limited space in my apartment. So what I would do is I would put my printer on top of my heater because I never ever used my heater. And uh, I rarely used my printer. So what they had done was they 
came to my apartment, started watching TV, there were three of them, and they got cold. It was really cold in that March, and they decided to turn the heater on, and about an hour after they turned the heater on, boom! All the ink cartridges, the printer, everything had melted and blown up and blew out all the fuses in my apartment. And they were super guilty. I mean, they felt so bad. I didn't care. I mean, it was like, I very rarely use my printer. And though I did need it and though I did want it, the story was hilarious to me and I knew how bad they felt. But um, he goes, well, if it makes you feel any better, we did write a really good song in your apartment. So about six months later when that album came out and the song was called The Apartment on their album, the, t the band's name was Times New Viking, The Apartment was actually my favorite song they ever wrote. So I guess in the long run it was totally worth it and it was a great story. Don't worry, I paid him back later. About five years later, they were on a huge tour opening for our favorite band ever, Guided by Voices, who was doing a reunion tour with their original members. And they came out here to play at the Wiltern. Adam got me and my girlfriend backstage passes and full treatment and everything. And, uh, well, while the uh, show was going on, I somehow let off the fire alarms. And Guided by Voices was actually recording a live show that night to uh, give out to fans. And... Luckily, they were doing a board recording, so you couldn't hear the fire alarm go off, but when the recording came out, I was super, super scared. Uh, but in true Adam form, when the alarms went off and he came around the corner and I was getting busted, and he's like, did you do that? And I said, yeah, he goes, oh, man. I was like, dude, I'm really sorry. And he goes, I don't care, it's cool. But Adam has always been that guy. Adam has never, ever let anything in the world ever get to him, and that's what I love about him. Well, since today was a real storyteller vlog, let me throw this one in for you. This is one that uh, crossed my mind today and actually had me laughing out loud. Um, the very first year I was here when I was in music school, um, going to music school was basically like going to college. Everybody there um, was there to study music and either had a loan to be there or had family that were paying for them to be there and they didn't have jobs. And one of our friends, was significantly older than us and had gotten grants to go because of his age. I think he was in his mid-30s at the time. and So he basically like got like college grants to go. And uh, every month he would get an allotment of money and then every three months he would get like this lump sum to live off of. And every time he got the lump sum he would take it to a music store and buy like an amplifier or an expensive guitar or something. And every month when he got that money, he would pay his rent with his monthly allotment. He would go out and buy a handful of groceries, probably enough for like three or four days. And then he would go to strip clubs and local bars and just quote unquote make friends. He would, and he was a real social guy. Anybody that came up, he would just buy their round of drinks. He would buy their meals. And subsequently he was always out of money by the seventh of the month. And one day I'm over there hanging out at his house and um, <laughs> I go in to use this bathroom, I take the lid up from the toilet, and I notice that the uh, toilet bowl is all black, like it has mold or something, and I go, dude, what's up with your toilet? And he's sitting on the couch, he just looks over and kind of like embarrassingly grins, and I go, it's black, what is that? What's the matter with your toilet? And he doesn't answer me, so I go back in, and because uh, I didn't know if it was like some radioactive something or other. So I go back in and uh, go to the bathroom. And uh, as I get done and wash my hands, I look about three feet to the right of the sink and he's got a telephone book with the pages ripped out to the F section. And what I had surmised was that he had run out of money, didn't have money for toilet paper, and had resorted to using the telephone book. So if you're ever in a pinch, I guess keep the telephone book in the bathroom. Hey, what's up guys? Sorry this was kind of a lax day, but I know I have to work again tomorrow and it's probably gonna be a long one, it's downtown. So I'm gonna try and vlog something for you downtown. And um, I was just wiped out. I needed a day where I was just chilling and uh, 
I know you guys will understand. So I gave you the Taft building. It was still in the neighborhood. So hopefully I'll be able to vlog something for you downtown. If not tomorrow uh, evening when I get back, I'll go and hit the Star Plaza and I'll tell you that story. But uh, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, share it. And thanks again, guys, for always coming and watching the vlogs. I hope you had a great day. I, I pretty much did, too. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. From Hollywood, California, Jordan and Joss say good night.